I'd like to welcome you to our online Master of Arts in Music Industry virtual information session. Uh, we are going to cover a lot of information um, and ultimately hope this will help you to determine if our program is a good fit for you. Uh, my name is Rashonda Butler. I am one of the student advocates here at the University of Miami online division. Um, if you should decide to apply and are accepted into the program, um, I will work with you closely during your first year of class to get you acclimated to the online environment. Uh, we do have a lot of content to cover tonight, and we hope this information is useful. Um, before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items. Um, first and foremost, we understand that your time is very valuable, and we have, um, it's going to take us about 45 minutes um, to get through this. If for any reason you have to head out or are coming in late, don't worry, you're going to be getting a, a copy of this recording. Um, it will be emailed to you later on this week. Um, again, we are going to cover a lot of content tonight with regards to the courses and the structure. Uh, you're going to hear from faculty as well as alumni. Uh, we want to make sure that this session is specifically geared to you. Um, so if there's a specific question that you have, uh, for these panelists, you will see a Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, so please utilize that. Uh, we would like to cover any questions that you have, but we do ask that we utilize this time as efficiently as possible. Um, so make sure that those questions are geared towards the content and structure of the program. Um, if you have any specific questions with regards to application, financial aid, uh, be sure to connect with one of our enrollment advisors. Um, they do look forward to speaking with you on an individual basis and they will help you through the process. Um, so now I'd like to introduce you to Andrea Jimenez. Um, she is the program director for Frost Programs. Thank you so much for that, Rashonda. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrea Jimenez, and as Rashonda mentioned, I am the program director for our Frost Online programs over here at the Frost School. Let's go ahead, and we're just going to jump straight into this. You know, and before we get started, we actually have a very special touch from our program director, Professor Serona Elton. Could not be here today. Um, however, she wanted to leave you all with this message as we get started here in this info session. Hello, my name is Professor Serona Elton, and I am the director of the music industry program at the Frost School of Music, both our on-campus program and our online program. I'm sorry I was not able to be there with you today, but I did want to say a very quick hello. And I wanted to tell you the thing that I am the most excited about and the most proud of when it comes to our online degree is that it is the same degree as our campus degree in terms of the content taught by the same amazing professors. And when you're in our online program, you are part of our family. We are one big family between on campus and online with a really large alumni base. And don't make any distinctions between students who studied with us in person or online. Once you are one of us, you are one of us. Well, enjoy the rest of the information session. I look forward to maybe meeting you in the future. Amazing. Thank you for that, Professor Elton. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to go ahead and jump straight into our panelists. Let's take it away. First, uh, I'm going to ask you, Guillermo, can you please go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us what you do here at Frost, your role, and how you interact with the online masters in music industry program. Oh, absolutely. Good evening, everyone. My name is Guillermo Page. I'm the assistant director of the music industry program here at Frost. I'm also an assistant professor, so I teach some of the courses that uh, you're going to take in our program, like the marketing course and advanced topics and uh, occasionally the, the uh, break level operations. Um, I also interact with students uh, throughout the semester organizing events um, where we have our forum events. We invite on-campus and online students to participate on events that we do uh, online and uh, via Zoom, and we invite um, you know professionals in the industry to uh, um, you know talk to students and share their experiences. Um, also, um, I run a a webinar about um, career opportunities and career development. So that's one of the things that we're making a, a very strong push on getting you prepared for the process of finding a job 
opportunity, even when you are on our program. So by the time you finish, you should be in the best possible position to find a job uh, in the industry. So be on the lookout. We do that seminar uh, once a, a semester. So be sure to join us. Um, so that is one of the things that, that I also uh, participate. And then again, if you have any questions while you are in our program, I'm always open to take any questions about the program, about your career, about any potential opportunities you want to discuss. So, um, you know, all of our professors in the program are very open to, uh, you know, talk students about any particular, um, you know, topics that they want to uh, reach out. All right. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Guillermo. Appreciate Welcome. that intro. Thank you. Right. Ray, the founder, the creator of What is Ross Online. Can you please tell us about you, your background, what you do specifically in our online master's in music industry program? Yeah. Hi. Um, so, yeah, um, Ray Sanchez. I'm Associate Dean for Strategic Initiatives and Innovation, and I'm also a professor in this program, both on campus and online. And uh, yeah, my very first strategic initiative 10 years ago was, in fact, Frost Online. Um, and I created some of the first courses in, in this. Um, so uh, it's been a, an amazing journey. Um, I've been teaching in the music industry program at the Frost School since <clears throat> 2001, um, way back when. Uh, but um, this is actually my second career uh, because for you know almost 25 years since the time I was in school until the time I started teaching, I was a fully self-employed musician in the music industry. Um, I own a production company. Um, I own a publishing company, actually two, technically. Um, uh, I've done a lot of different things, both on the recorded industry side and the live entertainment side of the business, but it's all really part of this big blob that we call the music industry. Um, the courses that I teach actually kind of um, are at two completely different ends of the spectrum. Um, I teach the music copyright law course, which is kind of my uh, geeky pleasure. It's my the intellectual side of me. Um, I love all that theoretical stuff, but I love when it gets into practice as well. The Ed Sheeran decision just a couple of weeks ago was phenomenal. Um, anytime there's a new case pops up, boy, I'm all over that. Um, and again, that's one of those, that's the first course that you'll take in this program, highly theoretical, lots of reading, it'll melt your brain, that kind of thing, but it's the foundation for everything that happens in this business. On the other end of the spectrum, being fully self-employed for a long period of time, um, I teach a course called Entrepreneurship for Musicians. It was actually the first course that I ever created for Frost Online. It's also the first course that I created at the University of Miami uh, way back when. Uh, it's the course that I never had when I was in school and the course I wish I would have had, which is how are we going to like survive better yet thrive in our careers? And so it's totally the non-theoretical. It's very practical, hands-on. Um, I was telling the previous info session that just a couple hours ago, I finally submitted my uh, taxes for my production company, for my corporation, you know, stuff like that, <laughs> you know, balance sheets, P&L statements, all kinds of things that uh, uh, you need to actually understand if you're going to have a go of it in a business that is um, just uh, really dominated by small businesses. I don't know if most people know this, but um, the second, the largest record label in the world right now is Universal Music. The second largest is not Sony or Warner. Those are the other two. The second largest are independents, conglomerates. So um, it, it is very much a business of a lot of small businesses and chances are, and you'll see from our colleagues here that are um, on this call, uh, that um, mostly working in small businesses. So um, that's a little bit about me. We'll talk more in a little bit. 
Thank you so much for that, Ray. So let's get to our amazing alumni. Andrea, if we could start with you. Please tell us about you, your background, what you're currently doing now since finishing the program. Go ahead. Hi, Andrea. There's two of us. I joked earlier, two Andrea J's now. Um, it's, I'm so excited to be here to express um, my excitement about being in this program. My, a little bit of background about myself is I was interested in being in music business because my mother worked for one of the top law firms. I grew up with a mom who explained to me about advocacy and music business. And so she always told me if I wanted to be in this industry that I needed to know the music business side. And when I looked for colleges, when I looked for universities, I mean, this one stood out to me because of the reputable um, things I've heard about the university, Frost School of Music. So it was um, really not a hard choice for me. Um, what I've done since graduating is I have, um, I always had a production company before, but I focused more on music production. I have one of the co-founders and founding members of an coalition, a music coalition called RAMPT, which stands for Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities. We are um, responsible for helping the Grammys become a little bit more um, accessible each year. And if you go to our website, um, you can become a community member, you can um, apply to be a professional member. And with that, there's a lots of resources. So I'm really proud of that work. I'm also the chair of the Accessibility and Disability Commission. And because of my knowledge, I give a lot of advice um, on um, arts. And so this degree that I have, um, you can use it for so many things because I wear so many hats. But I will tell you that this degree did help catapult a lot of what I do now. Thank you so much for that, Andrea. Miguel, please tell us a little bit about you, what you've done since you've graduated. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation again. Uh, my name is Miguel. I'm from Lima, Peru. Uh, I'm a musician. I have a Bachelor of Music in Music Composition. Uh, well, regarding my, uh, my career path, I have worked as a music producer. I have worked as an arranger in several occasions with several um, independent projects, including an international collaboration between Peru and Japan, uh, collaboration with a Japanese uh, independent uh, record company. Uh, but my uh, main career path has been, uh, is related to, to teaching. Uh, since 2018, I have been working as, as faculty at two uh, Peruvian universities, music schools, uh, I'm current, currently a full-time faculty at uh, Universidad Peruana de Ciencias Aplicadas, which is in Lima, Peru, uh, my, my city. Uh, I have been teaching music business, music production, and recently research courses uh, for undergraduate uh, music students. Um, so those are, it's, uh, and, and my interests in, in this regard are the economics of the popular music industry, um, specifically the Latin American music industry. And recently I have uh, founded a, a small independent record label. I'm, I'm currently working on a, a traditional Peruvian music uh, album, uh, which is one of my biggest projects so far. And uh, yeah, so that has been my career path. So I studied uh, my, well, uh, when I studied it, it was a Master of Music in Music Business and Entertainment Industries at UM. I started in 2018 and finished in 2019. And well, so far, I, I have to tell you that it was an amazing experience and I learned a lot and I'll be happy to share with you uh, anything that, that can be useful. Um, thank you very much again for having me today. Thank you, Miguel, so much. Michelle, please tell us your, about your background, a little bit about you, please. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Michelle Amirali. Um, I started um, with musical theater. So I started as a vocalist and a dancer and a performer first. 
Um, I actually graduated with my bachelor's from Frost School of Music in 2001. I'm also dating myself a little bit. Um, and what I realized is a lot has changed since 2001, you know, cakewalk and finale. People are not even going to know what that is right now. And um, I was always an educator after I was a performer and it kind of organically just blended um, since 2001, I did um, some performances, some tours, equity shows. I worked as a singer at lounges. I worked as a performer in musicals. And um, then I was teaching as well, you know, everything from music, choir, dance, you name it, all in the arts. And I decided I needed something to kind of catapult myself and help my students take that next journey in music, music education, music entrepreneurship. I ended up founding a company in 2000, 2006 called Broadway Kids Studio, where I combined all of the three performing arts, singing, dancing, acting, and instruments and music theory under one roof. And from there, I was I'm able to develop new performers, new educators, and we produce about eight to 10 full-scale musicals a year, we have um, summer camps, private lessons, everything. And I realized the only way for myself, for, for me to help my future students, especially with the new digital music media um, copyright law was to learn it myself. So I joined Frost Online, I believe it was 2019 or 2018, graduated in 2020. That was the best thing that happened in 2020 for me. Um, and it was nothing but a phenomenal experience. Um, I really was able to grow as an individual. It helped my business survive COVID. Um, I was able to take my own business to the next level. The professors are outstanding. So now having the business and performance background, I can also pass that along to my high school students, my young college students, and help them take their skill set to the next level um, along with school. So I'm hired, my company has been hired to create the curriculum for both theater arts and music in several archdiocese schools in Broward County, Florida. So we kind of have a lot of branches to where I started just as a singer dancer um, and then basically developed a full business with what I learned both with my undergrad and my master's at Frost Online. Thank Some you. Help. Some, I love that. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate you. Ray and Guillermo, let's talk a little bit about our, our curriculum, right? How we really try to adapt real world, real world perspectives, what's going on currently, right? In the business. Um, and let's talk about also those qualities, the habits that we, that, that students should definitely try to foster when they're in our online music industry program to succeed, given our curriculum and it being and it needing their attention heavily, right? Please, Ray, go ahead. We'll start with you. Thanks, Andrea. So, um, um, the as the person that's been around here the longest, uh, <laughs> I have a little bit of historical perspective. As a very important um, vantage point, um, because when I started here in two thousand one, um, what was happening in music at that time? What was the big controversy? Uh, something called Napster and a couple things like that. Um, um, by just so you know, by 2003, we were in the middle of changing our curriculum to what we, the faculty at that time, saw was clearly coming, in our opinions, clearly coming down the line. And what did that mean? Well, we got rid of courses that we used to have, such as, hmm, uh, we, we used to have a, cor a course in supply chain management of recordings. In other words, how to get records from one from the distributor to the record stores and how all that worked. Just done. <laughs> Just went away because we saw the future as digital, as streaming. We actually thought that streaming would be the future even back then. So we retooled our program to focus on rights administration, publishing, licensing, copyright, um, which is still, will always be foundational in the business, always was, but um, basically steered away from most physical product things. Yes, I know vinyl is still important and believe it or not in certain circles, cassettes are still a thing, but the real money in the business right now is everything to do with streaming, which is everything to do with licensing, which has everything to do with publishing, which has everything to do with copyrights. So right down the line. So um, the reason I say that, it's not because we were that smart. I mean, I think we were pretty smart, but rather it was 
the foundation on which this program was built going all the way back to 1966, I believe. We were the first music industry program in the, in the nation. Um, and it was built from day one on a, on a foundation of publishing and copyright. And so it wasn't unnatural for us to decide, you know, it looks like people are going to stop buying records and going to start listening to music on, at that time, their computers. But then when MP3 players came along, you know, long before phones and whatnot, you know, we saw the writing on the wall. So um, it, it um, the reason I bring this up is because your culture, um, the traditions that got you to where you are at a certain point inform what you may want to do moving forward. Um, and unlike a record executive that I know personally, which who, who remain unnamed, who said, I will sell records till the last CD to be sold. Well, he's no longer in the business. He's gainfully retired. He made a lot of money back when, but a person like that can't survive in the business today. Um, and um, so know that um, one of the distinctives of our program always has been, by the way, um, this program was founded by the creative, um, by the guy who was originally the creative director of the publishing company that owned the Beatles catalog. I, I don't know if even Guillermo, if you knew that, but uh, uh, the found the very founder of this all the way back to the 1960s. So ever since then, everyone that has ever worked in our program comes from a professional background in the industry. Um, this is the program you come to to um, not just learn how it was done back then, or but how it's being done now and how potentially it can be done because we're not just ex-pros. We're actually, we're still, we're still in I'm still in the business. So is Guillermo. Uh, I'm, I'm playing in two days. I'm working on two records right now. Um, so uh, yeah, we're still doing our things, but rather um, the, our professors, Professor Elton, you met her at the beginning. She's the perfect example of someone who is a true industry professional, but is also a true academic and a very thoughtful scholar type person, which is kind of what we all are. We kind of have both of those sides of the brain firing here. So um, I would say that's one of the probably the major distinctive of our program is that you're going to get faculty that are true practitioners and scholars at the same time. Thank you so much for that, Ray. Guillermo, let's, right. uh, same question for you. Let's talk about specifically um, our curriculum, how it's very real world based mm -hmm. and some qualities that, that, that our students should definitely inhabit to be successful in our program. Absolutely. The first one, um, we try to make all our courses experiential. In my particular case, I teach the marketing course. And in our course, uh, you're going to learn how to put together a marketing plan. So we go all the way from the beginning, you know, to show you how do you read the market, how you get all the information. We provide, you know, actual tools for you to get information. So you will have access to chart metric, which is a tool that more, uh, most major record labels use or independent record labels use to get information from the market. So you're going to be working with information that, you know, every major label uses at this point. And you're going to have exercises and experiences, assignments that are going to be related to actual, um, um, you know, uh, hits that are happening in the market, releases that are happening in the market. So... That is one of the key elements that we will try to incorporate in our courses, similar to what we do uh, on our in-person classes. So there is no distinction there. Assignments are similar and experiences are similar uh, because we want you to not only learn the theory about it, where we came from and what we're doing right now, but also how to do it yourself, which I think is one of our main distinctions is that you're going to come out with the skills that are going to help you uh, when you're in the in, in your career path. So that is very, very, very important. Another point on your question, Andrea, that I think is very uh, interesting is the habits of students that are successful in our program. I think that, um, you know, it, it's all on the student to get involved, 
to work, you know, on the timeline that the courses are laid out. Um, we all have office hours during the week. Try to participate, try to ask questions, try to communicate. We are all at your disposal, all the faculty, you know, it's here. So when you need uh, on your particular course, you have a question, feel free to reach out at any point in time. We're all open to questions. The office hour is critical. Students that participate in the office hour and ask questions, those are usually the ones that do, uh, um, you know, better in, in our programs. So there's a lot of information on every course. There's a lot of assignments involved that get you to where we want you to be, but you have to really do your part and ask questions and seek out, you know, our assistance because we're here for you. This is what we do and we do it for you. So take advantage of our opportunity. Thank you for that, Guillermo. Alumni. I'm going to ask you that question. What did you do? What habits did you have? To, did you realize I got to get with this in order to be successful in the online math music industry program here at uh, the Frost School? Michelle, we'll start with you. Thank you. Um, for me, it was really time management. Um, I have a husband and two young children. So I, my typical work day is from 8 a.m. to 7 because I have to make sure all the schools we're servicing are on task. I, I'm the one that writes the curriculum. I'm the one that oversees my staff of 25. And I'm in, I'm in the trenches teaching every day, at least, you know, five to six classes. So I think in order for a student to be successful, you just have to really want it and understand that you're going to be a better performer, a better educator, a better business person at the end. You know, you're going to, you have to have that want and that need to learn more. And the second you take a course with any of these professors, you feel like it's a whole new galaxy. You just, it's, it's, it's contagious. Their energy is contagious to you. So for me, it was time management. Sometimes I would allot myself, you know, my lunch hour and I would listen to, you know, on Blackboard, on the app, on my phone. So I didn't always need my laptop. It was great. It was really versatile. I would listen to the courses and I wouldn't take any notes. I would literally just process it and listen it. And then I would listen at night again after my kids were in bed, you know, so I made my own time schedule to make sure that I was falling in line with everything that was on my curriculum for our, this master's program. And it's really doable. You know, you do need the discipline to ensure that you're following the deadlines. But like um, like the both professors said, they have office hours. They're easy to access. You know, a lot of my classes had meetings once a week where we would meet the other people online, all the other students online. And it felt phenomenal. We really felt, I, I had, I felt like I always had great support from both my colleagues and my professors. Thank you for that, Michelle. Andrea, same question for you. Yeah, I think it's um, very similar to what Guillermo said, uh, just sticking up for myself and asking, um, you know, for um, instructions or, you know, if I didn't understand something to get more context about it. Um, I am a proud disabled, um, black, dis black disabled woman and all of my professors, um, I was very open with them about disabilities and accessibility. And I love that I could talk to them and come to them and say, you know, this, I'm not sure, this may be a little too abstract for me, you know, and I need to understand this more. So I think just making sure you stand up for yourself. Um, it's great to be independent and first read it through, very similar to what Michelle was doing. Do your part. And then if you've done that, um, if you still don't understand, don't feel ashamed. Uh, make a list of things that you don't understand. Also, if you have um, an access need or a requirement, don't feel ashamed about asking. You know, um, I found this um, university and the facility very accommodating when it came to those sorts of things. But it starts with you. You do have to um, do some self advocacy as well. Thank you, Andrea. Miguel, if you could answer that question for us. Yeah, thank you. Well, in my case, I have to stress um, also time management and discipline. Um, I haven't I haven't told you this, but I have another career. I'm, a, I'm also a physician, a psychiatrist. And during the time I was studying uh, at Frost, I was also like fulfilling my, my social service, which is a mandatory year of social service. And I was also working as faculty, so I, my schedule was pretty crazy. And I had to accommodate 
the study time most mostly um, in that crazy schedule. So it's really important that um, you understand that you have all the materials, you have the um, teachers availability, the professors, you can always reach uh, to them uh, to ask for you know anything that is not clear or ask for help in case you need it. But the thing is, you you need to have that degree of 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 discipline so you can organize your time to study all the contents. Uh, the program has amazing like audiovisual materials, and um, but the thing is that they also offer a lot of. Uh, uh, complimentary uh, readings and other stuff that can really help you uh, with your learning. But the thing is, it, it's really important that you can um, assign a, a part of your day to review these, these materials, these readings, so you can ensure yeah, that you are really learning what you're supposed to. And so in my case, it wasn't really difficult because I, I I'm used to do that. I'm I'm used to to try and and and, and really manage a, a crazy schedule, but I do believe that in order to be successful, you really need to consider how you're going to organize your time uh, and efforts so you can cover all the essential and even more than the essential aspects that you need to learn uh, in this program. Thank you, Miguel, so much. So Ray and Guillermo, going over to you all, what, so in regards to the different career paths that are available to uh, an individual that may be pursuing a degree in music industry, understanding the business of music, um, talk a little bit about that. What different career paths uh, have you seen our students go on to? We obviously have a robust panel of alumni here that are, are very diverse, which is beautiful, um, but other uh, career paths that we may not have touched upon that can absolutely prepare, can, this program can prepare you for. Uh, Ray? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll start again. I have a little bit of a longer view, but I, I, I will say I am always so surprised at uh, where our students end up. Um, um, the truth is this is a, uh, it's a 30 credit, very focused program. Um, understand that every student is different and what you bring into it from the undergrad side will also inform your future. It's not like you're starting here. Um, our colleagues that are here on the call with us all have very different uh, backgrounds from the undergraduate side and is completely have completely informed their future as well. Um, and um, so I like to think that, you know, we give the tools, both the knowledge and practice. Uh, I, I like what Guillermo said about um, experiential. Um, copyright is difficult to make experiential, but the other class that I teach, which is entrepreneurship, that's a different story altogether. Um, and so from that vantage point, um, wow, I've had people go out and start, you know, really interesting businesses or have become uh, pretty cool artists in their own rights, um, gone to work for uh, major labels, publishers, uh, performing rights organizations, gone into the live industry. The musical products industry is um, a little corner of the market that uh, a lot of people don't know about. Uh, Michelle, I'm so sorry we didn't get to see you at NAMM this year. Flight got canceled. Uh, but uh, uh, that would be, uh, we have quite a few alums working in that very robust and uh, very exciting part of the music industry. So um, it's hard to, it, it's not narrow, it's very broad, you know, the, the range of opportunities. Guillermo. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, nowadays there are so many opportunities in the industry and we have a very interesting balance between entrepreneurs, students that come in and decide to develop their own business. They're going into publishing, they're going into setting their own independent record label, or they want to be agents, they want to be managers as well. So they, they are, they're that area of, you know, that segment of entrepreneurs, but there is also other ones that end up in very interesting career paths. We have students that have uh, worked for uh, metadata companies, 
Uh, there was one that worked for a company that um, essentially um, review metadata for Apple. There is other students that have gone to work for Amazon. Some of them work at Apple. Some of them work at uh, the major labels. Um, just uh, this past weekend, I got a call from one of our students that uh, work at the A&R department at Columbia Records. She just graduated about, about a year ago and she is going into his, uh, her first year at Columbia Records. So there are many different career paths and the industry has so many opportunities now that is on to you to kind of pick your path in the same way that you decided at some point to say, okay, I'm, I'm interested in this program and join the program. What area of the business uh, is the one that, you know, gets you the most? Is it, is it the, the live entertainment side? Is it, is it the DSP, the digital, digital signal providers who want to work for Apple or for Amazon or Spotify? Or do you want to be on the publishing side and be uh, you coming from a creating background and you want to work with uh, songwriters on the publishing side? So it is wide open. Right now, the field is wide open and there are many, many opportunities. Um, we have uh, in our Blackboard organization, Blackboard is our learning management system. So when you take courses, you will be taking courses using that platform. We set up an organization there where you can basically click and find opportunities everywhere in the industry. So if you want publishing, you just type publishing and it gives you all the opportunities in publishing uh, in the United States. So right now the, the future is yours i mean the industry has never been this wide open and when ray was saying that the independence control the second largest segment on the industry that is absolutely true you no longer need to uh, be signed to a major record label to release your product you don't need to be signed to a major publisher to collect uh uh whatever uh, revenue you're entitled to so it is amazing what's happening with the industry and it's amazing the level of opportunities, whether you want to work for someone or you want to create your own uh, your own business. Yeah, I, I will say, let me interject here. By far, I think the most interesting career that uh, an alum has developed is we have an alum who is a professional mermaid. Now, mind you, that is her side hustle because she is also one of the top entertainment attorneys in South Florida. So if you want to check out Charlotte Town, that's her name. Uh, she's an alum of our program. Uh, she also is a professional mermaid. Uh, so I just had to put that in there because I thought I saw her on, on Facebook or something. And uh, she has these T-shirts that say the mermaid lawyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything is possible, really. Uh, anything is possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you both so much for that. Alumni, let's go over to you as we are hitting the end point here of this info session. Talk to us about courses that stuck out to you and that truly contributed to what you are doing now. And um, just any moments you had that you've had after finishing the program, like, oh my God, I remember learning this in this class and oh my God, I'm applying it. Um, uh, Miguel, can we start with you? You had any of those moments? Yes, of course. So one of the most valuable aspects for me was the way that the information was organized because before studying the master, um, I didn't even divide the music industry in these several like sides of uh, <clears throat> uh, like the life entertainment uh, part of the music industry, the recorded music industry. And it was it was really interesting that some of the courses were specific about some of these areas, like the recorded music operations course, and it was really interesting that I can I could take a specific course on music entrepreneurship, in this case with Professor Sanchez. Um, so I believe that those two courses were the most uh, important to me. <clears throat> I think especially because they were very specific. Um, it is not the same. This is it is, this can be this can sound really obvious, but it is not the same to be an, an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, sorry, on any industry uh, compared to the music industry. There are several features, structural features, economic characteristics of cultural products, including music, that are not the same as other uh, types of products and services. So. For me, finding a 
course that was specifically that was custom made for for me as a music entrepreneur was really really important just to find like the main the, the, the all the possible sources of revenue um and to study every one of them uh in, on, in detail uh it was super uh interesting and i think that was one of the most valuable aspects because then uh, after that after a couple of years i ended up applying i'm 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 a music entrepreneur now i have like a, a small record company and i and i'm literally directly applying all those uh teachings that i received all the knowledge that i received from professor sanchez uh 5 years ago and in the case of the recorded music operations course which was taught by professor elton so I had to adapt this course because I, I also teach music business courses in Peru. I had to adapt the contents of that course because like in Peru, we don't have like a course name like recorded music operations uh, or, you know, the, the fundamentals of the recorded music industry. So that was for me, it was phenomenal to do that. Uh, so I would highlight how those two specific courses were uh, ended up being very significant to to my career in this case as a, as a teacher but also as an entrepreneur myself thank you for that miguel andrea please um and i'm not just saying this i don't want to sound corny but really um the the program that that frost has put together there's such a wide breadth of classes and courses I'm still applying everything you know that I've learned. It's really difficult to choose one class. I have highlights from each class. Um, when with RAMP, Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities, we were able to talk with Netflix, um, their music department, and form a program for musicians with, with disabled musicians, um, a music licensing program. And um, where we were able to put our um, professional musicians in front of net Netflix as individuals, I would not have felt confident enough um, to do that without you know some of the knowledge that I received. And I learned I used to have a particular attitude about um, people using um, portions of songs and samples until I took the copyright class and I learned it just totally changed the way I thought about it that's an art within itself I have a new respect for that um and I realized that um I just told I mean I went years my whole life thinking one way and then you know taking the course and I changed my mind um live the live touring oh my gosh I my, my final project was a concert I made an accessible concert for all and I believe my professor asked my permission to use it in his classes to show people, you know, what that would look like. And so that was great. And just being able to um, use those things. If I wanted to put on a, because I'm in, um, you know, city civic leadership. And so if I wanted to put on a concert, I feel confident that I can do that. And so honestly, um, the whole program changed my outlook and I'm still using some of those tools today and I plan on using it. You know, I have so many projects going on, but I plan on using it more. Um, so I, I just love the whole program. Thank you, Andrea. And Michelle, please. Hi, um, for me, there really wasn't just one course. It was kind of a culmination of all the courses together that made me a better leader for my staff, a better performer when I still do gigs. But, you know, taking uh, Professor Sanchez's, you know, music entrepreneurship class, I learned everything from my business organically. I had no teachers. I had no business degree. I took zero business classes. I literally started my business with myself renting a karate studio, and I ended up now with 8,000 square feet and 500 students. So when I took those courses, it really put my business in a better track and gave me the confidence to believe in what I thought I was doing correctly. I just needed that validation and, and I needed it to grow as, as a 
a person really. And the copyright law classes as well, you know, Ray and I always talk, oh, did you hear about that choir, that show choir, you know, lost it? Did you hear about this? And all of that, it just opened up my mind in a whole different light. Um, I, I took a class, I can't recall the name of the class, but it was about performance and performance space and live venues and things like that. And I was able to renegotiate a contract with a venue for the city of Sunrise where I'm no longer renting the facility. They're asking me to come in and produce eight shows and just share revenue. And for me, that's a win-win because I can give my students two days of tech. I can give them, I can give this, the county three more performances of performing arts. And if I have extra tickets, I have the ability to give that to kids that are in need of the arts. So really I took from every class, you know, copyright law, um, entrepreneurship, live performance. I took from every single class there. This is a cutting edge program. And if anybody is thinking twice about going somewhere else, don't waste your time. This is a cutting edge program and you're dealing with real life scenarios and professors and alumni that are in the industry. So I, I, I'm blessed every day that I was able to graduate and I'm very thankful. Thank you so much, Michelle. I can't see a better way to end off this info session. I appreciate you all for being here with us. That was fantastic. Rashonda, please close us out. So thank you panelists for joining us this, this evening. A lot of great information was shared. Um, attendees, thank you also for joining us. Um, you Online is now accepting applications for our fall session. Um, we do have a uh, early admissions deadline um, in July, so please make sure you get your applications in. Um, also for uh, joining us this evening, we will do a $300 deposit fee waiver, okay? And there is a QR code on the bottom that will uh, take you right to the application. So call one of our enrollment advisors if you're interested in applying. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.